morning. Welcome to our worship service for Trinity United in Chediac. January the 17th. Oh, time is moving right along. Time is moving right along. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. They come wherever I call and walk wherever I may lead. I branches they will be ever free to go in love free to go in love and know the father's love through me never shall i lead them astray always i shall guide them never shall i leave them alone i shall be there Come wherever I call and walk wherever I may lead. I am the true vine, my branches they will be ever free to go in love, free to go in love, and know the Father's love through me. Never shall they want for their bread. I shall feed them. They are my body. I am their head. I shall be there to lead them. For I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. They come wherever I call and walk wherever Jesus God, as we come into your presence, help us to understand the words of Scripture and the words that I will speak this morning. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, we've been talking about this idea of going through a bit of John to look at, well, to see Jesus maybe in a new light for many people. We started off last week with describing him as the Word, the Word that was with God in the beginning. Now John comes on, and, and John adds an, another description to Jesus. He calls him the Lamb of God, who will take away the sin of the world. We're going to hear some pieces of Scripture this morning, and uh, then we're going to hear a message. Let's prepare for the, the Scripture readings. Jesus, 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 oh, there's something about that name.
We're going to hear a bit from the Gospel of John. And then we're going to hear a little bit of Matthew this morning. Starting at uh, chapter 1, verses 19 to 21 and 29, 29 to 34. The Jewish authorities in Jerusalem sent some priests and Levites to John the Baptist to ask him, Who are you? John did not refuse to answer, but spoke out openly and clearly, saying, I am not the Messiah. Who are you then? they asked. Are you Elijah? No, I am not, John answers. The next day, John saw Jesus coming to him and said, There is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is the one I was talking about when I said, A man coming after me. But he is greater than I am, because he existed before I was born. I did not know who he would be, but I came baptizing with water in order to make him known to the people of Israel. And John gave this testimony. I saw the Spirit come down like a dove from heaven and stay on him. I still do not know, did not know rather, that he was the one, but God, who sent me to baptize with water, had said to me, You will see the Spirit come down and stay on a man. He is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. I have seen it, said John. And I tell you, he is the Son of God. Chapter 3, verses 3 to 5, we hear, Jesus replies, Very truthfully I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and of the Spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, You must be born again, Nicodemus. That was Jesus talking to Nicodemus who came to visit him. Then we move on to Matthew to hear these words. Jesus' last commandment, you see, to his disciples was this. Matthew 28, 19. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. The words of the Lord. Bless them, as we have heard. You know, today we're going to be looking at uh, Jesus in a different light. We're going to look at baptism. Baptism, you know, it has a history. Yeah, it wasn't always what it is in the church today. We're going to learn a little bit about that. So would you pray with me just for a moment, please? Heavenly Father, as we come into this moment, help us to open our hearts and minds to a newness, a new way to see things. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Again, we're for the next uh, six Sundays left, we're going to be looking at the Gospel of John. I've suggested that you do some reading on that Gospel before these uh, seven sessions are over so that you would get a grasp of what I'm trying to offer for you. As I said, did you know that baptism has a broad history? Before the time of Jesus' baptism, 
was uh, uh, before the time of Jesus, baptism was used as a, a cleansing ceremony for uh, uh, to, to convert, yes, to convert um, to Judaism the, the unconverted. That, that was what the Jewish community used baptism for in the early time, before Jesus. John the Baptist took baptism to a new place. It became a baptism of repentance for both, not just uh, the unconverted, but for both Jews and Gentiles. Many believe John was the reincarnated prophet Elijah. That's why they sent those priests and Levites to him. So his followers, the ones that followed him, they believed in his preaching and accepted his baptism of repentance. He tells his followers in verse 19, 21, that he is not Elijah nor the Messiah, but is preparing the way for the one to come called the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, he says. The first of many labels attached to the name of Jesus. In the New Testament, John sheds more light on baptism by telling us that Jesus himself will not baptize with water, but will bring about a baptism of the Holy Spirit. We also heard that in the reading this morning. He will baptize with the Holy Spirit, John said. Here is an interesting observation. Jesus received the Holy Spirit while undergoing water baptism. After Jesus is baptized, the act of water baptism seems to kind of disappear for a quite some time, or go quiet, you might say, until the last chapter of Matthew 28, verse 19, we hear this. Jesus commissions his disciples. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And, here's a very important part, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded of you. After Jesus' resurrection and this final commandment to his disciples, he descends into heaven. This is at the last chapter of Matthew. Now that brings us back to the sacrament of baptism that we practice within the Christian church today. Some folks today question its purpose or its necessity. In my opinion, nothing happens without real commitment, folks. Otherwise, one would end up, well, sitting on a picket fence, you might say. Now I ask you, how long do you think that you could sit on one of those pointed picket fences? You see, decisions have to be made and commitments uh, to follow through are necessary if there's growth and movement. Therefore, we who have been commissioned continue the work of those early disciples by offering baptism as a commitment to follow in the ways of Jesus. And I must add here, just as it has happened to Jesus, the Spirit that has now uh, come upon him, and it happened during water baptism, uh, that, that's when it happened. It came upon him during this water baptism. I'm not sure how this happened for the church, but rules and the understanding concerning water baptism and its purpose are, well, distinctly different depending 
on your religious background. And we're going to be discussing that with the congregation before we get into the message this morning. What does baptism, how does it, what does it mean to you? What did it mean to you in your religious upbringing? Water baptism with the United Church of Canada today is basically used to seal the oath of allegiance to the ways of Jesus. Some denominations require a full dunking. Others, why? And, and, and that, of course, is keeping with tr John's tradition in the River Jordan. But for others, it's a sprinkling of water. Some faiths baptize infants. Others do not. With infant baptism, the parents of the child take on the responsibility and make pledges to bring the baptized child up to imitate the ways of Jesus. His way is understood to be the way of truth, of turning away from all evil, and to love God first and foremost, then yourself, and then your neighbor as yourself. Adult baptism is the same, except it's the adult that makes the commitment and the pledges themselves. May I suggest that baptism was never meant to be some sort of, well, instant salvation, nor was it meant to be a guaranteed ticket to heaven. I have found no evidence in the scriptures to establish that concept as fact. In Christian baptism, we make a covenant with Jesus to follow in his way and to be obedient to his teachings. You see, that was what we read this morning in Matthew 28 as he descended. It's known as the Great Commissioning to baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and to obey the teachings of Jesus. In the United Church, we call baptism an outward expression, meaning we follow through with our pledge, of an inward reality, meaning the God within, full of love and compassion for all. Now here is a nugget for you. Baptismal vows after said can only be seen as you begin to practice the great commandment. To love the Lord your God with all your mind, soul, and strength, heart, and to love your neighbor as you love yourself. Did you know that our brothers and sisters in the Salvation Army, uh, they do not recognize or practice, I should say they, they do recognize, but they don't practice um, baptism the way that we do. No, no, no. They believe that you can have that experience of full grace and communion with Jesus without performing the rituals. Now here is something for you to consider. If you observe their behavior, they actually appear to practice what we commit to in words. May I suggest that the sacraments of both baptism and communion are vital to our denomination, but there must be visible signs that we are following through with what we have pledged. Otherwise, we become hypocritical of the ritual, you see. That brings us to the second baptism spoken about by John in the early reading this morning. 
baptism by the Holy Spirit. Jesus takes us to another level of baptism. What is it and how does it work? For many faith groups, this is considered the salvation baptism. I have not yet found clear biblical evidence to support that belief in Scripture, but I have seen clear visible evidence that spiritual baptism does bring with it personal revelation, a paradigm shift, if you will, in your thinking. I do believe it can save you from worshiping other gods, like money and materialism, saves you from the act of covenant, from your anger, from your jealousy, your hatred, your bigotry, your prejudice, and from one's own self-centered ego. It's a powerful baptism. It has the power to allow you to see your true self and to deal gently, and I say that, with your false self, and we all have both. It gives folks a new start in life, takes away the fear of death, and assures you of a place in the house of many rooms. You might even call this baptism the born-again experience. That which we heard Jesus tell Nicodemus about in the reading this morning. May I suggest that spiritual baptism is personal and therefore does not happen in the same way to all people. Can it happen during water baptism? Yes. Is that not what happened to Jesus during his water baptism? I restate verse 33. I still do not know that he was the one, but God, who sent me to baptize with water, said to me, You will see the Spirit come down and stay on a man. He is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. How does one know it has happened to me? It awakens within you the truth about yourself, your life, reality, death, and the awareness of God who is in Christ Jesus and the Spirit of God who is within you. It's quite an awakening. It opens your mind and heart and prepares you for services to your neighbor and friend, to service in the church, both here and now, and gives you a glimpse of an eternal life. I like to think of those who have had such an experience as becoming one of God's, has become one with God in mind and spirit. They become one of God's kingdom builders here in this world. The mystery of the man they call Jesus is still unfolding even for the most seasoned uh, followers. Jesus holds the power to change everything if you let him in. What did he say to the woman at the well? Jesus said, if you drink of my living water, you will never be thirsty again. Jesus said, if you drink of my living water, I'm the bread of life, come down from heaven. 
light to the world. Your life will never be the same. Jesus said, if you come to me and surrender, you will never fear death again. Jesus said, if you come to me and surrender, I said before, um, this is the 17th of January. My goodness, the time is moving. I would like us to uh, to uh, just sing a little bit of a, an offering song. And uh, if you have an offering, hold on to it and, and give it to the church of your choice or to a, something that's important to you. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. And we offer up to you the sacrifices of thanksgiving. And we offer up to you the sacrifices. Gracious God, we just thank you for this day and for the many blessings you bring to our lives. We offer ourselves and we offer prayers for others, especially our brothers and sisters to the south, where they are struggling in a time that is very uncertain for the, uh, the country of America. We pray that your hand of grace and mercy will be upon each and every one and that your, your heart of compassion and caring for one another may be shed upon those who have to make decisions. May the truth be known, whatever that truth may be. We pray for those in hospital and nursing home. We pray for those who have lost loved ones through the disease of COVID that has been spreading all over the planet. And we pray for all those who are suffering in any way. All these things we ask in his name. Amen. Go now in peace, never be afraid. 
God will go with you each hour of every day. Go now in faith, steadfast, strong, and true. No. Blessings in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit for this day and for the days to come. See you next week.